Good morning to one and all present here. I take immense pleasure to welcome you all with the goal to likewise turn you into a part of our program. Thank you to each one of you for being here with us today. Art Integrated Learning is a framework of experiential learning which provides an equitable learning environment for all learners through their own access point. Today, we celebrate our first ever annual day which no one far from believing ever thought would be possible but our students together with their teachers turned it into a reality. According to their caliber, the entire presentation is done by our children with innocence. They have displayed unparalleled talent and made this possible with their hard work, determination and efforts. Undoubtedly, we are very fortunate to have such teachers who recognize their talent and chisel it with a sphere called wisdom and love. They draw the creative, academic and sporting potential out of the students by giving them all an enriching learning experience. We are all set to present it for the first time virtually uniting all of you here under the same roof with common interest that is adoration for art and its different forms. I would now like to welcome our Vice Principal Deepa Ma'am to share her valuable thoughts. Welcome Ma'am. A oh, very good morning to everyone. It's an extremely proud and emotional moment for all of us on this very special day as our school is going to complete one more fantastic year. How true it was some time ago. How easy was it to relate to it. We all would agree to why the friends we make at school are said to be nothing less than family. I now at this point take the opportunity to wholeheartedly invite you all to Pawar Public School Hinjavadi's first ever virtual annual day. Unlike the rest of the annual days, this one begins a new only trend. We've always heard this saying from our elders, school life is the best, make the most of it. And we do not want our students to miss out on it at all. As much as we would have loved to meet each other personally, circumstances are not permitting us to do it. Although online, we did not want the children to miss out on another year without the annual day celebration. Annual day is where you get to see how, you're, how creative your children are in various fields. Only this time their creativity has bloomed on various new branches. Children have been exploring areas which are very new to them and are gearing up with the 21st century skills. I hope you understand and appreciate the effort that they have put in to make this event memorable. It was a daunting task to integrate art with the academic content. This year, we are showcasing the state of Odisha in all its glory and magnanimity. So dear parents, sit back and enjoy. Appreciate and lastly applaud the efforts of all the students and teachers who have put in so much to make this experience a different yet memorable one. Thank you. Hello everyone. We are so glad to welcome all of you to our Art Integration Project presentation. I am Stephanie Namdar of Class 8C and I am going to brief you on this project. So the Art Integration Project is a part of the Ek Bharat Shreshta Bharat program launched by CBSE. This program aims to enhance and promote the mutual understanding between the people of various states and union territories. This time we are so honored to be paired up with Odisha, a beautiful state blessed with vast resources and rich culture. I hope you will all enjoy watching the presentation as much as we all enjoyed while making it. So let's begin the journey. Diviani Nath from Class 8C and I welcome you to our special program Unraveling the Secrets of Our Nation. Today along with my classmates I'll be taking you to an amazing journey to an amazing state 
which is rich in cultures, cuisines, monuments, temples and shrines. It's none other than Odisha, a state which lies in the eastern India and has neighboring states like West Bengal and Jharkhand in the north, Andhra Pradesh in the south and Chhattisgarh in the west. I'm blessed to be born in the magical state of Odisha. Since my childhood, I have learned so much about our traditional food, culture, festivals and most interestingly the mythological stories about gods, goddesses and temples. But don't you worry at all. I'll be taking you to one wonderful tour of this land which is rich in cultures and traditions. So without any delay, let's welcome our first group who are going to present a picture on modern Odisha, which includes information on economy and resources, mouth-watering cuisines, sports facilities in the state and many more. Let's start with an overview of modern Odisha. Hi, I'm Ira and I'm going to help you explore modern Odisha. Odisha is come far as a state. The modern boundaries of Odisha were demarcated by the British Indian government when the Odisha province was established on the 1st of April 1936, including the Odia-speaking districts of Bihar and the Odisha province. The 1st of April is celebrated as Odisha Dibasa or Utkala Dibasa in the memory of the formation of the state. Odisha is also called the sports capital of India, so it is no surprise that sports has played a key role in the development of the state. Odisha has hosted various sports events from time to time. Odisha is one of the most mineral-rich states in India. Talking about business development of Odisha, the primary industries are manufacturing, mining, quarrying, electricity, gas and water supply, and construction. Odisha has vast potential for development of tourism. It is one of the critical sectors of the state's economy in terms of foreign exchange earnings and employment generation opportunities. Let us know more about modern Odisha through our next presentation. Thank you. Oh, hello there. Are you the person who wanted to know more about Odisha? Well, I won't be able to tell you much about the religion or the history, but being a successful entrepreneur, I can tell you about the resources and economy of Odisha. I'll explain about the resources and economy of Odisha through a small slideshow, but first, let me introduce myself. I am Santosh Sahu and I am the owner of Sahu Textiles, a pretty well-known company since there are 2,461 uh, total industries in Odisha. Okay, but enough about me, and now let's get to the slideshow. So, the economy of Odisha is one of the fastest growing economies in India. Over the last seven years, Odisha's overall growth was 8%, while the national average was 6.9%. That just shows how much Odisha is developing. The country has spent around rupees 12 lakh crore, which is 8.4 of its total expenditure for agriculture in 2020 to 2021, while the other states have only spent about 7%. This is why the economy of Odisha is known to be agriculture based. The population of Odisha is around 4.19 crore, and the per capita GDP is rupees 1,16,614, making the GDP of 2021 to 2022 about rupees 5.86 lakh crore. The expenditure in 2021 to 2020 was around rupees 1.5 lakh crore, which is an 11% increase from the pre previous year. Now, mat time. So get your pen and paper out and try to solve this. So the expenditure of 2020 to 2021 is rupees 1.5 lakh crore, which is an 11% increase from the previous year. Now can you find out the total expenditure of the previous year? I'll give you some time to solve this. Okay, now I will reveal the answer. So over here, as you can see, by solving uh, the question by using this method, we can find out that the expenditure of the previous year, 
which is 2019 to 2020 is around 1.35 lakh crore okay now back to the resources of odisha so odisha is very rich in minerals due to its geological setup about three-fourths of the area of odisha is taken up by the precambrian metamorphic rocks which contain a lot of the minerals found in odisha some of the minerals that are found in odisha in large deposits are coal iron ore and bauxite odisha fulfills about one-fifth of india's coal one-fourth of its iron ore and one-third of its bauxite requirements some other minerals found in odisha are manganese chromite limestone tin nickel lead graphite diamond gold and many other minerals odisha gets most of its water from the bay of bengal from lakes chilika and ansupa the river mahanadi which is also the sixth longest river in india also flows through this land the state of odisha uses wind solar hydroelectric biomass and other renewable sources of energy to produce power Odisha is a very beautiful state which is improving and developing day by day and I can guarantee that you won't regret shifting to Odisha. Hello fellow classmates and teachers. Today I will be making chaur vada, a dish from Odisha. So for making vada, we first need rice and urad dal. I have soaked the rice and urad dal overnight and then I have drained the water. The second ingredient we need is carom seeds. The third ingredient is ginger and a chili. And the fourth ingredient is salt according to taste. We will pour the rice and urad dal into a mixer or grinder. And then we will put adrak or ginger and a chili into the grinder. Now we have mixed all the ingredients and grinded them into a thick paste. Be sure the paste is not too slimy or else the vada will not come together. Heated the oil till the batter comes upward. Now we will put the vada in the oil. As you can see the bubbles start forming because the oil is heated. While the vada start to change their color into golden brown color, we have to fry them until they are in fully golden brown color. Now we will slowly take out the vada from the oil as they have changed their color into golden brown color. Now we will prepare tantoli jhola or imli ki chutney. So here we have tamarind pulp, sugar, green chili, garlic, and ginger red chili, salt and panchapuran. Now we will add sugar into tamarind pulp and mix it till it is dissolved. Now we will add salt according to taste and mix it. Now we will add red chili into the tamarind pulp and then we will add green chili. And lastly, we will add garlic and ginger. We will prepare panch porin for our imliki chutney. We will add panch porin into the oil. Now we will add panch porin into our tamarind pulp. Now our chawal vada and tentuli jola is ready and we can serve it hot to our guest or we can eat it by ourselves. Everyone, welcome to another interesting episode of Fun and Facts with Dori. I'm your host Dori Patil and today we are having a small talk with Mr. Dilip Dhar. It's our honor to have you here sir. Thank you Dori ma'am and hello everyone. Pleasure is all mine to be on this incredible show. So let's start with a small intro. Dilip Turkey is a former Indian field hockey player who was best known for his penalty corner hit. Mr. Dilip Turkey was one of the most difficult defenders to beat in the world. He is a former captain of the Indian hockey team. He has also worked as the chairman of Hockey Tourism, Odisha Tourism Development Cooperation. And he is now working as a chairman of Odisha Hockey Promotion Council. 
Sir, could you tell us a little bit about what does the Odisha Hockey Promotion Council aim at? Uh, yes, I feel that it is very important uh, for more young people to uh, uh, show more interest in the sport and represent our country at an international level. So we basically try to nourish the sport and we try to get more people to play this sport. That's really a great job that you are doing, sir. Now, I would like you to ask some questions about your journey of becoming a sport legend. Yes, I would love to answer. Sir, what motivated you to choose and in that field hockey as your career? Well, uh, field hockey has been my passion since my childhood and I have been playing with my brothers and fathers for a very long time. My parents always uh, also encouraged me to pursue my game and I am what I am today. Oh, what is one important lesson that you have learned from your time as a professional athlete? Uh, I've learned many important lessons in my time as an and one of them is that communication is important during the before and after the game. With strong communication, we always stay connected and that helps us improve our game. When we're on the field, we always try to encourage others to perform better. If we don't uh, communicate with, with each other, then it will leave, us, leave some of us in the dark and that will keep us from performing well. I feel happy to share this information with all my viewers that Mr. Dilip Bhutaki has been honored with many awards like Padma Shri in 2004, Arjuna Award in 2002, Viju Patnaik Sports Person of the Award in 2004, and Riku Hockey Star of the Year in 2009, and many more. Yes, thank you ma'am. I was only able to do this by consistent to work hard. Sir, at last, do you have any advice to young people who want to start a career in sports? Well, all I can say is that we should always be determined to accomplish what we strive for and we should never quit trying it if we fail because we learn from our failures. That's very true, sir. It was really nice talking to you. Thank you, Mr. Dilip Turkey, for joining us tonight. Thank you, Gauri, ma'am, for having me on the show. Thank you, everyone, for watching Fun and Facts with Gauri. We'll meet next week with an amazing famous personality. So stay tuned, stay home and stay safe. Bye. Bye. Warm greetings to one and all. Myself Oman Ra from Class HC and I am going to help you all to know more about Odisha, a state which is full of various art forms like Patachitra, Sand Art, Stone Carving and so on. Odisha is also rich in tribal folk culture and has total 62 tribes in it. The most interesting thing about their culture is that they have mixed other customs with their traditional practices which has given birth to an entirely new cultural lifestyle amongst the tribes. Odisha is also well known for its handlooms. Odisha has an illustrious heritage of handloom weaving. From generations, lakhs of handloom weavers from Odisha have been weaving and producing rich works of art, upholding the beautiful and unique tradition of the state. Let's hear to a brief information on tribal, folk culture and handlooms of Odisha through a presentation done by my classmates from group 2, starting from an overview on tribal culture and handling. Hello everyone, my name is Ananya and today I'm going to introduce you to the amazing world of tribals. When any one of us hears the word tribal, the first thought that comes to mind might be that there are a bunch of uncivilized people who live in jungles. But that is not entirely true. They too have beautiful customs and traditions of their own. But do any of us know about their customs? No, right? So today, me and my friends are going to help you get a glimpse of the life of tribals in Odisha. This tourist destination, which is known for many a reason, is also known for sharing its land with 62 tribes that are 24% of its total population. These tribes serve as the soul of the state and are the ones who have till day their tradition and cultures intact. Taking over the Eastern Ghats, these tribes are mostly tucked to the districts namely Mayurpanj, Kyanjar, Jaipur, Balasar, Bhadrak, Diogar, Angal, and more. While the Kond and the Central tribes are the most widespread in Odisha, other tribes such as Munda, Oram, and Gond also have a major impact on the state. Despite belonging to different linguistic divisions, the tribes of Odisha have many socio cultural similarities and together they characterize the notion of tribalism. Tribal societies share certain common characteristics and by these they are distinguished from complex to advanced societies. Or in India, our tribal societies have remained outside the main historical current for civilization for centuries 
therefore they manifest cultural features signifying a primitive level of socio cultural existence that's all from my side now my friends will help you know more about the dances of the tribals and the handloom industry thank you hello everyone i'm gauri patel and today i'm going to tell you about dalkai dance which is a famous tri- famous tribal dance of odisha dalkai dance dalkai is the most popular folk dance of odisha it is known as dalkai because in the beginning and end of every stanza the word is used as an address to a god mainly the theme of this dance is radha and krishna ramayana mahabharata etc it is performed in various festivals such as bhai jyotiya pagun puni etc usually young women from binjar kuda mirda sama and some other tribes of samarpur and napuda district participate in this dance dalkai dance originates from the samarpur district of east indian state of odisha it is the most popular dance form of western part of odisha the men shout the word dalkai bo at the end and beginning of each stanza sung in the dance this is the reason why the dance is known as dalkai dance The themes on which the dance is performed are the eternal love story of Radha and Lord Krishna, episodes from the Hindu epics Ramayana and Mahabharata, and description of nature. Instrument used during the dance. The dance is accompanied by a rich orchestra of folk music played by a number of instruments known as dhol, nisan, tamki, stasa, mahuri, etc. However, the dhol player controls the tempo while dancing in front of the girls. Costumes and jewelry worn during the dance. It is supposed to be formed by an unmarried uh, woman wearing traditional Sambalpuri sarees in bright and vibrant colors, with ribbons or scarf tied around their shoulders, hands, and legs. Women perform the dance while wearing traditional jewelry like bangles, jhumkas, necklaces, and many more. The dance formation starts with one single line. The women perform a set of dance steps and later move into a circular position with the change in the flow of the music. The dalkai dance pace continuously increases and decreases throughout the performance with the help of a doll. Hope you enjoyed the presentation. Thank you. Hello everyone. My name is Arif Prasad. I am a weaver in Odisha and today I am going to tell about handloom industry and weaving in Odisha. Odisha is f- famous for its hand weaving and handloom industry. It is the second largest employment in India and also in Odisha. There are more than 3 lakh weavers in Odisha. The industry represents a continuity of an age old Indian heritage of hand weaving communities. Odisha is one of the prominent states in handloom textiles and handicraft map of the country providing livelihood to the people in rural Odisha. Sambalpur fam- famous for its sambalpuri sarees is one of the most famous centers for Odisha handloom. The villages at Bagra, Sonpur, Kenpali are the hub Renowned weave also the lanes lined with uh, houses and master craftsmen plying their trade. Thank you. Hello everyone. Today we are going to be discussing about a state very 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 famous for its cuisines and its artworks. You guys did right. It's Odisha. And today I'm dressed as a tribal who makes artworks and all. And today I am going to be talking about various kinds of artworks made by tribals in Odisha. So let's dive right in. Tribals arts and artifacts. This sand art is in Kandagiri caves in Bandhaneshwar. This painting right here is a different type of painting known as the Saura painting and is stored in the Tribal Arts and Artifacts. This painting right here is a Patachitra painting made by the tribal people in Orisha. Wow, that was indeed awesome. The state of Orisha is not only rich in cultures and resources, but it also has 
a glorious history which includes ancient caves, temples, tourist places and mythological stories. So let's welcome our group 3 who are going to share some interesting information on ancient Odisha. Welcome everyone, my name is Dumpur and I will be your guide today. As you know, Orissa is filled with different traditions, cultures, arts and dance forms. It also has varieties of cuisines. But do you know Orissa is also known as, known as the land of ancient temples and caves? The temples and the caves of Orissa are famous for the architecture, historical and mythological significance. The temples and the caves are beautifully carved and designed. designed. The patterns are extravagant and very accurate. Each temple has its own history. For example, Konak Sen Temple. Konak Sen Temple is a striking example of ancient artistry and creativity of ideas. Due to its artistry and creativity, the temple is dedicated to God Surya or Sun. Although much of the temple is now in ruins and racks, it still retains enough charm to be captivating. Lingraj Temple Lingraj Temple is a classic example of architecture in the Kalinga style. The temple complex has 150 shrines. Lingraj is also known as Swayampu, which means self-originated shivering. Now, during the ancient times, there were limited means of entertainment. Puppet show and mud graphy were one of the popular ones. People used to gather at one spot to watch and enjoy the show together. People from all age group used to love these art forms. Well, that's for well, that's from my side today. But there's a lot more to explore. Thank you. Hello everyone. Let's listen to an untold story about the Konak Temple. Once upon a time in a kingdom called Kalinga, that is present day Orissa, King Narsingh Dev returned to the palace joyously after winning a war. His mother, Kasturi Devi, congratulated him on his victory and expressed her wish to build a massive temple dedicated to Suri Devta, the sun god in Konak. Curious as to why his mother wanted to build a temple for Suri Devta, Narsingh Dev asked his mother. In his reply, she related a story. Narsingh's son, Stamba, was a handsome young prince. He used to constantly tease Narsingh Being angered, Narsingh pulled an act as a result of which Stamba was punished for his wrongdoing. His cursed by Krishna to turn ugly and worthless. On seeing that the handsome prince was cursed, all the princesses refused to marry him. To rectify the curse, Stamba decided to go on a tapasya to impress the sun god in Karna. After 12 long years, Suri Devta was impressed and granted his wish to return to his previous self. When, the, when he passed in the river nearby, he was once again a handsome prince and had a stone in his hand. On being impressed by Suri Devta, he established a temple near the river by worshipping the stone as an incarnation of the sun god. Since then, many people visited the temple to fulfill their wishes. As Suri Devi also added that I myself went to the temple to wish for a son and that's how Narsingh Dev was born. Narsingh Dev was impressed by the story and wanted to build a massive temple for his mother. He immediately ordered to get all the materials required to build the temple and start the work. Around 1200 workers worked day and night over the span of 12 years to build the Konak temple. Just when the temple was almost ready, the workers faced a problem. No matter how hard they tried, they couldn't place the holy Kalash on the temple tower. When the workers brought it up to the king, he denied to listen to them and ordered that if the Kalash wasn't placed within fortnight, the workers' head would be chopped off. Hearing their death, 
The workers tried various methods to do the same, but they failed. That's when a 12 year old boy called Dharma came to their help. He was the son of the main sculpture of the temple. He was born after his mother did Tapasya to wish for a son. Once when the king, once when he came to visit his father at Konak, he saw the workers in despair. On asking the reason, they told him that they couldn't place the Kalash. Dharma said, I can place it only if my father gives me approval. On getting approved, Dharma climbed the tower and placed the Kalash within a matter of minutes. Everyone was happy as they no longer will be beheaded. However, some workers feared that if the king gets to know a 12 year old did what grown men couldn't do, he would give order to kill them all. On fearing that such thing might happen, Dharma wishing to help the workers climb the tower and jumped into the river nearby and gave his life away. Unaware of all of this, in the same day, the temple opened. The temple was inaugurated on an auspicious day with a number of rituals. However, the temple soon started to fall apart. Stones and statues started falling apart. Puzzled as to what's happening, he inquired and found out about Dharma at his death. On discovering that the temple had started with the death of a boy, he shut down the temple. The temple was soon lost in forest and left abandoned. It was it was later when the British invaded our country that the temple was found and restored. What we see now is only a part of the sun temple. The rest was destroyed over the years. That's the story as to how the Konak temple came to be. Thank you. Hello everyone. Today I am going to be sharing a folk tale from Odisha, the seventh sun. Long time ago, there were seven sun in the sky. Their rays made the earth so hot that the humans couldn't bear it. So the seven brothers from a tribe called Munda decided to kill the suns. They threw arrows at them. They were able to kill six of the suns. One, the seventh one did hit behind the hill. Now when the suns are gone, there was darkness everywhere. Animals couldn't see, the elephants bumped into the trees, rabbits walked over the lions and there was confusion all around. They, the animal decided to have a meeting that who was the best one to call out to the sun. The lion went first as he is the king of the forest. Sun, sun, please do not run away from us, come back and shine on us, roared the lion. But the, but the sun did not listen to him. Then elephant called out next. He raised his trunk and trumpeted, sun, sun, please come back. But the sun did not listen to him. The beautiful peacock tried next. He said, Sun, sun, please come back. But still the sun refused. At last, the rooster tried. He crowed, Kukuruku. The sun peeked out a little bit from the hill. He ag- Everybody was shocked. He again crowed. Kukuruku. Finally, the sun was up high in the sky and everybody was happy.
God, where is this tour guide I booked? Oh wait, I think I see him. Sahab, Sahab, over here. I'm very sorry, I got a little late. As you know, there was a big traffic jam because Corona just ended. So, I am a tour guide for today. Where would you like me to take you first? Well, hello there. I want to see the temples and caves of Odisha first, as I've heard a lot of good about them. Your wish is my command, Sahib. Take a seat in my cab, and I will take you to one of the most majestic temples of Odisha first. And also, you're in luck, because I have studied a lot about these temples, so I can give you a lot of interesting information as well. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, let's get going. Sahib, we just now arrived at Lingaraja Temple. Wow, that's great. Can you tell me something about these temples, as this is my first time visiting this, and I want to know as much as I can before leaving. Of course, the Lingaraja Temple is a Hindu temple dedicated to Shiva, and is one of the oldest temples in Bhubaneswar, which is the capital of the Indian state of Odisha. For some history, the Lingaraja Temple was built by King Jajati Keshari in the 10th century and then completed by his son King Lala Tendu Keshari in the 11th century. The main festival celebrated in this temple is of Shivratri, as millions gather here to celebrate the birthday of Lord Shivji. Wow, that's a lot of great information you told me. Now let me look around for a few minutes and then we can head over to one of the caves you know about. A few moments later. Sab, we have now arrived at the Udyagiri and Khandagiri caves. Can you tell me something about these caves? Of course. Firstly, these caves are partly natural and partly man-made. It is believed that most of these caves were carved out as residential blocks for Jaina monks during the reign of King Kharavela during the first century. These caves are a very popular tourist destination in Odisha, are situated on two adjacent hills Udyagiri and Khandagiri, which is where they get their name from. Udyagiri means sunrise hill and has 18 caves, while Khandagiri has 15. Till now we have known about modern Odisha, tribal, culture and even known about ancient Odisha. But there is still one thing remaining to uncover and that is the music of Odisha. Music of Odisha or Odissi music is a part of Indian classical music which originates from the eastern state of Odisha. Odissi music has a history spanning over more than 2000 years. It includes authentic Sangeet Shastras, unique ragas and talas and a distinctive style of rendition. Let's hear to an elaboration on musical Odisha through a presentation done by my classmates from group 4, starting from an overview. Hello, my name is Vivan. Today I will give you an introduction on the dance and music of Odisha. Odisha, a land of temples, India's best kept secret etc. titles have been accorded to Odisha. Its purity isn't bound within the number of temples or tourist destinations residing in it. Its diverse cuisines and festivals enhance its uniqueness as well. But a state full of cultural ethics and artistic values cannot run low in the field of entertainment. Utkala, another name for Odisha which gave the, the meaning Utkrishta, excellent, Kala, art. This Sanskrit term defines the nature of Odisha very well. The famous classical dance of Odisha is Odissi. Within time, Odissi has made its way throughout the world. Today, many countries adopt this Indian classical dance form and are considered to be one of the most difficult ones as well. Odissi is a major ancient Indian classical dance that originated in the Hindu temples of Odisha, making it the purest form of art. Odisha is one of the musical centers of South Asia. In the 11th century, Odissi music was codified into a classical style related to other styles of Indian classical music. Odissi music is different from the more famous Hindustani and Karnataki music, despite being a part of ancient Magadhi music as well. The existing musical tradition of Odisha can broadly be grouped under five categories tribal music, folk music, light music, light classical, and classical music. Thank you. Music of Odisha Music is intertwined with the social fabric in Odisha. The dainty dancers and musicians depicted in the temple architecture had suggested the stamina of glorious, glorious musical tradition. 
whose legacy is an important element in our cultural heritage. Be it any function, activity, or social gathering, music is omnipresent. Diverse lifestyles and social customs have shaped the musical shape of Odisha, which is distinct yet soulful. Jayadeva was the first Odia poet to compose musical lyrics that were meant to be sung, and he also suggested the classical ragas existing during that time in which the lyrics were to be sung. Ritual Music of Jagannatha Temple Odyssey music is intimately and exclusively associated with the Jagannatha Temple of Pori. The deity of Jagannatha is at the heart of Odisha's culture, and Odyssey music was originally the music offered as a seva or service to Jagannatha. Every night during the Bhata Singhara or the last ritual of the deity, the Gita Govinda of Jayadeva is sung. Set to traditional Odyssey rakas and tatas. This tradition has continued and broken since the time of Jayadeva who himself used to sing in the temple. Travel Music of Odisha The indigenous tribes of Odisha are the architects of the state's vibrant culture. The echoes of their soulful music brightens up the hills and forests. Earthy lyrics and traditional instruments are the distinctive hallmarks of the tribal music in Odisha. Folk music of Odisha Energetic beats, raw, raw lyrics, and feet tapping music are typical of the folk music of Odisha. The lyrics draw inspiration from the incidents of day to day life in nature, establishes a strong connect with the listener which has in turn helped the folk music scene in Odisha to evolve and survive in onslaught of modern music. Odyssey Music Modern-day modern Odyssey music owes a lot to great poet Jayadeva and his epoch-making lyrical poem Gita Govinda. Ingredients of lyrical composition of Gita Govinda like raga, tune, tala, beat, etc. were introduced in the Temple music, which in turn over a period of time, came to be known as Odyssey music, as we know today. The intimate relationship between poetry and music is the foundation on which Odyssey music is based. Another important feature is the lyrics, which is sung without fragmentation or distortion. All, the ingredi all these ingredients combine to give Odyssey music its distinct identity. Good morning everyone, I'm Sai from Class 8C and today I'm going to perform an Odyssey dance for the Art Integration Project. Let's begin. Through this presentation, we found out that Odisha is a place where we enjoy and explore at every single step that we take. To conclude this excursion, I, on behalf of my entire class, would like to thank you all for being with us throughout this exciting journey and watching this wonderful presentation created by enthusiastic students of Class H. Have a wonderful day ahead. Thank you.
Dear parents, an event like this cannot happen overnight. The wheels start rolling weeks ago. It requires planning and a bird's eye for detail. We have been fortunate enough to be backed by the very motivated and dedicated team of Pawa Public School, Hinjavari. As Alice Walker said, Thank you is the best prayer that anyone could say. Thank you expresses extreme gratitude, humility and understanding. We express our sincere thanks to our principal DK sir who inspires young minds to mold themselves into wonderful human beings. Thank you Deepa ma'am for your continuous guidance and support in making this event a grand success. Today we have witnessed a rainbow of performances which have been choreographed under the stewardship of our teachers. A big thank you to all the teachers for being such wonderful facilitators. We would also like to thank all the parents present here. Your participation and presence encourages us to create new benchmarks year after year. Lastly, a huge round of applause for all our students' fantabulous performances. You all rocked it. Thank you.